Have you ever heard Guitar Zan? The song Guitar Zan? No, no. Yeah. I Dan? Huh? You, you youngins out here just <laughs> you ain't been around long enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them crazy songs. All right. <clears throat> Welcome tonight. We're glad to have you with us tonight. And um, the Lord's blessing be upon you. And we're going to pick back up with reclaiming the blessing through the word. So let's just real quick recap uh, just points. We're not going to go into any detail on any of the previous points. Um, we, we want, we're going to receive the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is to whom? The seed. But if you be Christ, be, be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. And what was the blessing of Abraham? The blessing of increase. Amen. Blessing and increase. Amen. Hallelujah. I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. Or in multiplying, I will multiply thee and in blessing, I will bless thee. That's King James and the Weymouth translations. And so... Um, we established that. We talked about and last week. We, we started really moving into this and employing your divine apparatus, which is what? Your mouth. That's right. Okay. And um, so we began talking about words, the power of words. <coughs> In that, we quote from the book of Revelation that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Okay. Um. We should be speaking those things which Jesus has provided for us. Um, now, remember, he is the seed. But if we be Christ, if we are possessed by Christ, we're in Christ, then we are, amen, the seed of Abraham. Okay? Because we're in Christ. Um, we talked about that God released the blessing through words. He told Abraham, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, and God blessed him and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters and the seas and the fowl. Multiply on the earth. And, um, and then God blessed the seventh day and called it holy, etc. Now, we began talking about um, Abraham and, and, and kind of tying words in here. Genesis um, 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, that from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, the curse means to speak negatively of them. Blessed means to speak good of someone. Whenever we curse someone who is blessed, we invite the curse on our lives. And then we said this, get away from people or anything else that may negatively affect your thinking. Why? Because negative thinking produces negative speaking. All right? Now, how many of you ever grew up with a relative that was the mother of all negativity? The M-O-N, the mon, the mother of all negativity. You couldn't get anything positive out of it no matter what. Now, Kenneth Hagin um, uh, talked about that he had a, um, there was a relative in the family somewhere, I'm trying to remember who it was. But then, however, that, that relative would just, no matter what, you would say, they would have something good to say about them. And finally, the, the child just got fed up with, you know, everything was good. He said, I, don't, I think you would speak good of the devil. And they stopped, didn't say anything. Well, he's persistent. <laughs> they just refuse to say something negative about anybody, including the devil. Okay? Um, if you are a negative thinker, everybody say negative thinker. You will be a negative speaker. That's all you're going to do. You're going to speak negative about everything. Um, it may not start out that way. You know, I remember when we, when we first, a lot of us first came into the charismatic word of faith movie. We preached a lot about words, about your positive confession, about speaking the right things. And everybody was watching their mouth. And they, we had confession beepers, you know, symbolically. You know, if somebody says something negative, ah, I wouldn't say that if I were you, you know. I mean, we, we would just scare negativity out of them because everybody in the church was about to attack them, cast a negative speaking devil out of them. Seriously, I mean, it was bad. We, we even got to work, like, like I said, we created 
bad confession beepers. If you made a bad confession, everybody was trying to outdo each other to get to you first, to, to, to lamb blast you for saying something wrong. You can't talk like that. Amen? You, we, can't, we can't do that. You know, don't you know? <laughs> don't you know that's what you're going to get? You know? Or we, then we got to start getting cute. Somebody says something negative and say, well, I'll agree with you. If that's what you really want. You kind of arrest them a little bit. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't really mean it, da 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 Well, the truth is don't be saying it. Amen. Don't be saying it. Don't speak all that negativity, unbelief, and all that, because you'll start believing what you're saying. It'll get to the point that even if there, it's not so, because you said it so much, you just believe it. Buddy Harrison told a story one time. He had taken a job, and well, he was at a job. He got promoted to the, the uh, dock foreman, okay, working at some kind of trucking company or whatever, and he was a dock foreman. And um, no, no, he was an employee. But they heard they got a new boss, and a new dock foreman was coming in. That's what it was. New dock foreman was coming in. And the scuttlebutt was he was a jerk. He was just a jerk. They were all talking about how bad this guy was because they heard he's bad. And so Buddy said, you know, the guy came walking in on his first day, and he saw him. He said he put his foot up on a pallet and went, and that's a jive turkey if I've ever seen one. Never even talked to him. He said never even talked to him. But he had already, been, they'd been talking and already convinced himself through talking that, the, you know, the guy was a jerk. A j you know, yeah, you got to be older to understand jive turkey. Okay? Huh? No, just a jive turkey was, it was actually mainly an African-American term back in the 70s. You were a jive turkey, you were a, uh, you were a jerk, you were, you know, it, was, it had negative connotations to it, okay? My error, we, we, that was a phrase we heard all the time. Okay, well, it wasn't, it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> just in case you didn't know, <laughs> it wasn't a compliment. All right, so anyway. He let words affect him to the point he formulated an opinion of someone he had never talked to, worked with, knew anything about other than what other people said. So words have power. They create and they, they, they mold, they shape, they, they affect our thinking. And if that's what you're listening to, you'll make opinions, you'll formulate opinions, you'll say things that you really don't didn't even believe or anything beforehand, but you began to accept them because you were hearing it said, and then you began to sit around and talk to people. Well, I'm, yeah, I heard that guy is a jerk. And, you know, he's hard nosed. He don't give anybody. I mean, and everybody just, he gets bills, 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 bills. Everybody hearing it, and then what happens? What happens? You start acting on what you heard and been feeding into yourself. So. Look with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 12. Because if we're going to walk in the light and receive a provision made, then our verbiage, our words are going to have to be in harmony, you know, to confess the covenant, to speak the covenant. Covenant meaning to um, agree, come into agreement. If we're going to confess what we agree about, we got to say what he says. Put your finger there real quick. Run into Isaiah 55. I think we were there last time. But let's just run over there real quick. Verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways higher than your ways. I mean, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So 
shall my word be. Is what? Seed to the sower. Now, who's going to do the sowing? We are. That's right. God has sent his word as seed to us. We sow that seed. What? His word. Well, how are you going to sow a seed? With your mouth. Okay? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Now stop. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. Well, how is it going to prosper in the thing he sent it? It's got to be planted. It's got to be planted. So what God says becomes the seed that he wants you to plant because he wants to give seed to the sower. You're the sower. Remember in the parable of the, seed, the, seed, the sower and the seed? The sower sowed the seed. Jesus gave us the parable. Some fell on this kind of ground, four, and four different kinds of ground. Amen. Some fell on good ground. Amen. So, how do I find out what the blessing is? How do I get the blessing working in my life? How do I know it's the will of God? Find what His Word says. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he's got a word he wants to give you to sow. What is he telling you to do? Submit your thoughts and your ways to his and say what he says. Say what he says. Let the word, amen, let the word of my mouth and the uh, uh, meditation of my heart be wholly acceptable unto you, O Lord. The psalmist said. Well, how's that going to be? Well, the only way to guarantee you that it's going to be wholly acceptable to God is to say what he says about it. Okay? See, when you say what he says, you already, got, you already know he's for it. Because you see, what I say was not going to return void. It's going to prosper. Amen? Amen? Again, Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Who wants to prosper? And I ain't just talking about money. Part of it, but not the whole. I want to prosper physically. I want to prosper mentally. I want to prosper spiritually. I want to prosper financially. I want to prosper in everything I set my hand to. Amen. So, prosperity is not limited to finances. It's part of prosperity. It's not the whole. Okay? <clears throat> so, we're to meditate in the Word. Day. What? The Word. Why the Word? Now, the book of the law would be the Word of God. Now, remember, the first five books of the, law, of, of the Bible, okay, Genesis, Exodus, um, numbers, Deuteronomy, and um, oh God, that's went totally, totally, totally. Leviticus went totally blank there for a second. Okay, first five books, the Pentateuch, was referred to as the law. That's just what they called it. So when Jesus referred to the law, he, he was talking about the first five books because when God, when, when, not Jesus, but uh, God spoke to Joshua in Joshua one. After Moses had died and, they had, and Joshua had been raised to the chief uh, big guy in charge, God gives them a word, the book of the law. Now, the book of the law at time was the word of God. That's all they had. That's what they had, the book of the law, five books of Moses. They had the Pentateuch. So they had, they had that. That was the word of God. So it's just as easy to say the word of God. This, this word of God should not depart out of your mouth. New Testament wise, it would be the word of God should not depart out of your mouth. So this book of the law or the word of God should not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do. Now remember what we said last week about meditation? Means what? To mutter. To mutter. And we've all muttered. Amen. 
Got that John Wayne movie. Um, I think it's Chisholm. And uh, his sidekick, um, in real life, his, his name is Ben something, um, one of the old Western guys. And, um, but he, he was always walking around muttering to himself. What would you say? I didn't say nothing. Yeah, you did. I, I, you know, always muttering. He's speaking. See, muttering is speaking primarily to yourself. So this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate, mutter it, speak it, day and night. What for? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make, you know, y'all shall have good success, okay? okay. Prosper and have good success. All right. So, because you're speaking it. We said this last week. That when you speak it and you get to the point that you're hearing it so much, when opportunity arises, you'll do it. Amen? Amen? You'll do it. Opportunity arises, you go do it. Because right? you're speaking it. And I'll tell you one thing. If so-and-so ever does this to me, I'll, I'll jack them. You know, and you keep saying that for whatever reason, you got something against so and so, or you think they got something against you, or you just don't like them. So you're always telling people, I'm going to tell you what, they mess me, I'll jack them up. Wait till you get the opportunity to jack them up. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to jack them up. Now, they might get up and whoop your butt, but you will have done what you said you were going to do. Okay? Or they may get up and whip your derriere. Sounds a little more sophisticated, doesn't it? En français? Hey. All right. <laughs> but you kept speaking it. And you kept speaking it. I don't tell you what, the first time they tell me such and such a work, I'm quitting. And they may come and say it and tell you something, and you've done quit before you even realize what you did. House payments due tomorrow, by the way. I wasn't very smart, was it? So at least, you know, gone out and got another job first. Then turn in your notice. <laughs> okay? So, back over here in Isaiah. So now God declares that the way he thinks and the way he, um, his, how, how he acts, his ways, are at a higher elevation than ours. Amen? And then he says, this word should be that way, that it may give seed to the sower. Isn't that right? Bring, you know, uh, the rain comes down from heaven and watereth the earth and it bringeth forth fruit that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. See, God wants you to partake of the blessings of the word and he wants you to sow the word so that you can take provision from the word. All right? So now we got, th this is getting more and more established as we go through the Bible, your words. Amen. So God, but what we have to understand, I, I was in a conference. Oh, gosh, this is around 1980. I want to say 84, mid-80s, mid okay? And I had gone to, uh, with some other ministers to um, Brother Summerall's World Missions Conference. And he had a very special guest speaker who I had a, I loved. Still love his ministries. Now he's gone on. Uh, both of them have gone home to be with the Lord now. Well, this, this one and his wife had been overseas so long, people thought they were dead. They've been on the mission field so long. You got, this is not social media era. It's not texting. It's not, I mean, you go out, you're gone two years. Nobody's even heard from you. You're out in the bush. You know, may get word back every once in a while, somehow through traveling caravans or whatever, that I saw so-and-so in there, you know, whatever. It just it was it was not a, a high communication era. So uh, anyway, he had come back to America. And um, to share the things that God has done and and all this with the American church because they thought he was dead. Literally, he goes somewhere and they say, "Who are you? Well, I'm so and so." Well, well, so and so, I thought you were dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, so he's, well, he's at the conference, him and his wife. And his wife had um, kind of taken on a, a wrong role 
as far as ministry. She had been in these countries where women were treated horrible so bad that she began to become more, not really activist as we would think of it today, but for that era, activist about women and women's rights and that kind of stuff and make sure women felt good about themselves and that kind of thing. And began to elevate things she said to places they didn't belong. And um, so they're sitting up there, and after he had ministered, we had an open question, question session with, the, with any of the ministers out there and them. And so one of them said, well, Dr. So-and-so, da-da-da-da-da. I'm trying not to use that because I'm not out to slam anybody. I just, you know, uh, what, what about this? And um, she, and he said, and he go, he's going to get us all inspired about missions. And talk about, what, you know, what do you need to do to go in mission field? Some, some question kind of on He goes, missions? You're greenhorns. You don't have the ability to go. You can't eat the food. You can't drink the water. I mean, he just went up. He's really trying to inspire people that missions is not about, you know, this hunk of door glorious thing. You're going to have to pay a price to do missions. And his wife goes, well, you got sick drinking the water one time. He had drank water out of a, out of a horse print hoof where it had rained, and that's all the water they could get. Just slammed him. Like, yeah, yeah. Nobody liked it either. And then she went on and kind of took over and started talking. And somewhere in all there, she started talking about, you know, um, being creative and God using you to get things done. She said, I give God ideas. And her husband said, you give God ideas? She said, yes, and he likes them. About that time, Brother Summerall jumped up, ran up to the where they were sitting. I see, I'm not, this is not hearsay. This is not tape. I was there. I was watching it happen. And <clears throat> he goes up there sitting at a table side by side. He walks up, puts his hands on each of their shoulders, pulls them apart, leans his head at the microphone, says, they just flew in before the service. They're tired. They're going to the hotel. We'll see you tonight. And shut it down. <laughs> I give God ideas. No, you don't. You don't give God ideas. Okay? And then later, Brother Buddy told us, he said, Buddy Harrison, Kenneth Hagin's son-in-law, said, he doesn't, she doesn't know how close he, she came to getting filleted by him right there in front of everybody. But because of his love for so-and-so, her husband, he didn't do it. But he was getting ready to, and Brother Summerall could clean a clock very efficiently. I mean, he was, he was a bull in a china shop, I mean, for Jesus. He, did, he didn't, he had two doors on his garage, one on the front and one on the back, so he didn't have to back up. He drove in and he drove out. If he couldn't, if he went to the mall he, and he couldn't get a parking space where he could drive back out, like drive in this way and pull it far enough to drive out, he wouldn't park there. Because he didn't back up for anything. That's what he said. I don't back up for anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he could have cleaned your clock. But what I was after? You see, she said, I, you can't give God ideas. His ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. Amen. Now, he may let you figure something out, but he already do ahead of time. He is omniscient, by the way. Okay. So what he's saying here is we must take the word of God and put it in our mouth as the sower of the seed. Because everything we say that comes out of the Bible that is for us to receive and to take, partake of is bringing us into harmony with activating and operating in the blessing. And it's our words that are really his word we put in our mouth. We take it and put it in our mouth. What? We come into covenant. We come into agreement with God, what God said, by confessing or declaring what he said. It's ours. It's for us. So words now are released. Amen? Um, the psalmist says, in, um, or the Pro in Proverbs, it's written, in Proverbs 18, 21, that power, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What? The power of life and death is in the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Wow. So we can either speak negative or wrongly or sinfully. 
What is ne negative, wrong, sinful speaking? What is that? Well, it's not just cussing. Okay? Let's don't be so limited. Well, cussing? I didn't cuss. You may as well have. As a matter of fact, it would be better for you to cuss than to say something contrary to the Word of God. A blankety blank, 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 blank would have been better than saying, um, God will not heal. Why? Because saying God that will not heal is speaking contrary to his word. And speaking contrary to his word is worse than cussing. Yes, you're not supposed to take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. All right. I get that. But I'd rather hear you cuss than, than say God doesn't do what he says in his word. That one ever big. You know? Now, you got people who don't, who will say God, don't believe, that God didn't say such and such, or God doesn't do such and such anymore, when the Bible says it clearly makes it that he does, who would barbecue you for cussing. I mean, they would put you over the pit and hang you up and, and just roast you. Put you on the skewer. Make sure you get well done on all sides. Because you're going to hell. Because you said that word. But you turn right around and say God doesn't do and then what he said he would do. So what have you done? You have sinned with your mouth. Because you've accused by default God of being a liar. Now you dress it up in King Jimmy. A little Elizabethan twist here. You know, put a little philosophical, doctrinal, eschatological, exegetical vent on it. So it sounds like you know what you're talking about, and you're full of it. What is it? All kinds of stuff. Mainly unbelief. Mainly unbelief. The power of life and death is in the tongue. So you have to govern your tongue. Now, James says that the tongue is an unruly evil. It talks about how difficult it is to control it. <clears throat> well, how do you control the tongue? By meditating the word and speaking the word? You can train your mouth not to speak contrary to the word of God. How? By putting the word of God in your mouth day and night. By speaking what the word says. First question you should have rise up in you when you face something is, what does the word say? Well, I don't know. Now, in the day that we live in, electronic, all that, there are Bible apps. Probably the best one, that I, the one I like best for just an app is eSword, e-sword.net. Okay? Used to be free. I think maybe it's $25 now. And it's got the King James. It's got the King James Plus, the plus is all the Strong's concordance numbers. So you can, you, you can be reading with the King James Plus, and I have a number beside words, and you come across, well, I'm not really sure what that means. Click on that number, and it'll open up Strong's definitions of that word right there on your app. It'll do search by phrase, do search by word, that kind of thing. It's not a full-blown Bible study app, but it's a very convenient one to have around all the time. Now, I have PC Study Bible on my computer, which is very thorough. So many works on there, you know, you can't even go through it all. I mean, but it's, it's a, it is a desktop app. It's a desktop program. It's not even an app. It's a program. Okay? And it doesn't work on Apple. Sorry. It works on PCs. Okay? Only. So all you graphical, artistic type people just have to get your regular PC or a dual boot PC. That works on Windows and it runs under iOS. Thank you for your enthusiasm. With an Intel chip in it. Okay? Because that's what they did. They, went, they left the Apple chip and went to the Intel chip so you could run both, you could dual boot. Okay? You could dual boot with it. So if all you need it for is just to be able to run PC Study Bible, well, they'd get you a dual boot computer and put it, get it by and put it on there. And that's expensive. They say it's expensive. It's probably. For the whole package now, it's probably close to $1,000. All right? But still, it, 
That, that's, all, that's all irrelevant. Bottom line is, in our day, you could have an app on your phone that would give you a Strong's definition on the spot wherever you are. Boom, just like that. So, and it would do a search on a phrase. Okay? And you can put it that in there, go get out anything that has that in there, or, you know, you want to, you know, say, you know, speaking or word or speak word or whatever, and look, and it will give you all the scriptures that kind of cover that, have those words in it. All right? So there's no excuse anymore. Well, I don't know how to find it. You can find it. I remember the day you used to have to get out your Strong's Concordance and your different Bibles and Englishman's Concordance and had your whole desk covered in all this stuff and you're flipping pages and looking at here and then uh, Englishman's it takes all the Strong's numbers and shows you everywhere in the Bible that word's used. It's kind of reverse concordance. So you could take the word salvation and it was just soterious, and you would look at that, it would go, it would go with the strong find what that is, and give you a number. You go to, to Englishman's, take that number, and go into where that is, and it show you everywhere in the Bible and what, how it's translated. Then you can look up all the scriptures. See, we sh You could do that now electronically in about two seconds instead of 20 minutes. I'm telling you. And click on the verses and look at them and read them right then, on the fly, right then. So it took, you know, it took that laborious research time down from hours even to seconds so you can study and find out all right but we need to be students of the word we need to study the word okay because you need to know what the word says about something so you can speak what it says amen why because as you feed upon it and you meditate upon it, where are you putting it? All right. Would you, let's look over into, um, we were in Matthew 20, 12 starting out. We're going to go back into there because we didn't finish. I ran off on a side journey. Not unusual for me. Um, and Jesus says here in Matthew 12, verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Listen to this. For out of the heart, I mean, see, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, I'm not talking about you come to church, you're in a, you know, got the word confession beepers out on everybody. Got those, you got the guys over here just waiting for you to make a negative confession so they can just look like they're the super spiritual guy in the church. Okay? Da -da 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 -da. Negative confession, negative confession. I mean, like a robot. That's not in their heart because they memorize so much. That's not in their heart in abundance. They've memorized something, but it's not in their heart. You have to meditate until it's in your heart. Okay? So Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Let me say this. When there's pressure on and the confession beepers are not out, and there's nobody at church to hear what you say, what are you saying? What are you saying? Nobody there to judge you. Nobody there to say, I wouldn't say that if I were you. You're by yourself. The pressure has come. What's coming out of your mouth? Because that's what's in there in abundance. That's what you've been feeding on. Hello? Now, if, well, the Bible says such and such, such and such, then you know what you've been feeding on. But if you're saying, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm in trouble. That's what you've been feeding on is, is unbelief. You've watched one too many CSIs. Okay? Now, a lot of those cases are real cases. They just took and kind of Hollywooded them up for the program, but they were real cases. Actually, a lot of them actually took place. And they went and found police files all over the country and then wrote a story like that. Yeah. So you're feeding on CSI. 
crime scene investigators. Yeah. You know, or a little bit too much of law and order. Bink, 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 bink. Got a good lick to it, but you know. <coughs> I mean, bad stuff's happening. And if that's what your feet don't, you get yourself in a situation where you're, you're in a, a real life situation where it kind of mirrors that episode you saw. What's going to be speaking to you at that moment? That episode, they got strangled, their fingernail, their, their eyeballs plucked out, or you know, it's just gross stuff. You know, there's a serial nut bag out there. And I'm his next victim. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Instead of, well, the Word of God says I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Reminds me of a story. My, our pastor's wife, when we first, um, when we were in Greenville, we were in our, our denominational church. When, after I went to Rainbow, we moved over to a non-denominational. And it wasn't having anything against my denomination, but the headquarters of that part of the state had just released a memo to the pastor saying, don't let anybody come preach Hagen or Copeland in your church. I just graduated from Rama. How am I not going to preach what I just graduated from? That's all I've been listening to. So we left, went to a, a Word of Faith church that had just started the year I was gone. Well, I was out in Tulsa. It started and I came back and we went over there. And the pastor's wife had gone to Christ for the Nations. That was Gordon Lindsay's church. Um, Brother Lindsay was, was the, um, created the magazine called The Voice of Healing, where all the healing evangelists around America and the, and the revival, healing revival of the 40s and 50s advertised that they were coming to this area. They had to go into, the only one that wasn't in there was Brother Roberts because he had his own magazine. Or Roberts had his own magazine. Okay? I mean, that's really the only reason. He, you know, he did, and then The Voice of Healing, he had his own. His, his following was so big. <coughs> so, but the pastor's wife, they had a guest speaker one day. And they read from the 91st Psalm that he shall, under his wings shall, uh, he shall cover thee with his feathers, under his wings thou shalt trust. And one of the girl's students came back uh, the next day to testify. After she left school, she was walking to go home. And this car pulled up in front of her, and guy got out and said, get in, get in. And she started going, feathers, feathers, I'm covered in feathers, feathers. <laughs> I know. That's all she could remember. That's all she could get out. But guess what? The guy thought she was crazy, went back around, got in his car, and drove off. She said that hollering, feathers, I'm covered in feathers. <laughs> well, she was quoting the Bible. Amen. <coughs> and she knew what it meant. And God, God just took it and put him in derision all by himself. Remember, uh, they went out to march against the uh, other tribe or the uh, enemy, and God stirred up the camp. They got up and killed each other. They got there. They were all dead already. They just picked up all the gold and everything and walked off. <laughs> you know? God will cause the enemy's camp to be confused. Amen. I said amen. So <coughs> when, we, when we fill up with the word, out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaketh. Glory to God. Well, when you're, if you're filling up on the Word and you're speaking what the Word says, you're going to be speaking the blessing. Amen. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, of, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle, useless, um, baseless word that a man speaks, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Listen to verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Hallelujah. Can y'all say amen? All right. Psalm 119. Verse 11, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Now stop. <coughs> Let's go back, as we did earlier, and expand sin. See, sin's not just breaking the Ten Commandments. Sin is to get out of, 
Sin would be to get out of agreement with God and speak contrary to what he says. What did Satan do in the Garden of Eden? What's the... Let's run back there. Genesis. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle or cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the free fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, just a real quick point. God never said don't touch it. He just said don't eat it. He's already got talking foolishly because she obviously won't listen. And the serpent said unto her, unto the woman, ye, surely, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of it thereof and did eat and gave it to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, just so you know, I grew up, I remember my, my, my church is quarterly, Sunday school quarterly. And I remember the picture where Adam's over on the other side in the lake fishing, minding his own business, and the wife shows up with an apple which is supposed to represent the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and gives it to him, and he eats it, and it's like, oh, my God, woman, what have you done? Just blaming women for everything. That's not what happened. He stood right there and watched that, and he could have stopped it at any time. He could have stopped it at any time. Now, let's look at this. What did Satan do? What did he do? He deceived him? Yeah. He manipulated, yeah. But what did he do? But what was he doing? Yes, but what was he doing? He questioned the word of God. And then accused God of having an ulterior motive in the things that he did say. He half God said? And then she quotes back and he goes. You won't die. She, tell, she says God didn't tell the truth. Because he knows that in the day you eat it, you'll be as a God. Hello? He questioned the integrity of the Word of God. Amen. Now, what, what happened here? Well, she saw that it was good to eat, lust of the eyes. Amen? Or the pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes. Good to eat, lust of the flesh, and make them wise, pride of life. Those are the three sins of failure. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Exactly what Satan tried to tempt Jesus with in the, in the, um, after he fasted in the wilderness. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He questioned God's word. And he's still doing it today. He's just, remember, he's more subtle, more cunning. Oh, yeah. God says, I'm Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. But God stopped doing that. He didn't say I was. He said I am. Hello? Hello? He didn't stop being Jehovah. It's not, I was. Remember Jesus said this? He said, um, before Abraham was, I am. And he took up stones to stone him because he made himself God by saying I am. I am was a phrase they used to refer to God, the great I am. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh, he said, you tell him that I am that I am sent you. Not I was, 
Not I will be, I am. I am. Hallelujah. The great I am sent you. God is present. Amen. Now, um, Jesus refers to God in one place. Says, uh, well, Jesus says this. He says, I, I, he that was and is and is to come. He exists in all three places. But when God made covenant, he said, I am. Not I was. Not I'm going to be. He wasn't going to be your healer. He wasn't your past tense healer. He is your healer. But now Satan comes to people and gets them to go, well, that passed away, da 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 Where'd you get that idea from? Well, that all passed away the day the last apostle died. Prove that with Scripture. You can't. I said, you cannot. There is, unless you twist, what did Satan do in the garden to Eve? He twisted. He twisted. Unless you twist things, you can't come up with that. Hello? The day the last apostle died, the canonicity of Scriptures. You know, when that which is perfect, that's the Bible. Perfect. No, the, the Bible is not the perfection. It is the completion of redemption when we get our glorified bodies. You're not going to need speaking in tongues when you have your glorified body. You're not going to need healing in your glorified body. You ain't going to have devils in your glorified body. So all the gifts of the Spirit, you're not going to need a word of knowledge. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible says in that day you'll know even as you're known. You won't need a fragment of what's in the mind of God. You'll know. Amen? Amen? So these, these things, what are they? They are tools of the adversary to question the validity of the Word of God. Can you say amen? Well, why? Why? Because if you begin to question the validity of the Word of God, guess what you won't do? Speak it. You'll be unsure. You won't have confidence to make a declaration. Y'all still with me? So Satan, just as he did to Eve in the garden, will question the, the authority, the validity, the motive of what God says simply to undermine your acceptance of its absolute truth and reality. I mean, that's the big new thing that's going on in the world today. Oh, the Bible's just a book. Men wrote it. Well, the Bible itself self proclaims that holy men of old wrote as a spirit moved on them. It wasn't men writing. It was the Holy Spirit moving on them to write. And they, see, they want to invalidate the Word of God because then people won't believe because it takes faith to act on a word that you can't prove out in the natural. Well, the doctor said, I got to die. But the Bible says, you'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. The Bible says, with long life will I satisfy thee and show thee my salvation. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. And if you were, then you is. He's already, buried, he's already carried your, your sicknesses and diseases to the cross, and you can access the completed work on that in Jesus' name. It, everything that is done from the world is to invalidate your acceptance of God's word being truth. And if you don't accept it as truth, you won't put it in your mouth. And if you're not putting it in your mouth and believing in your heart, then it won't work for you. Amen. Y'all still here? You gone home? I don't think I saw any of the doors open up. Okay. So, <clears throat> we have to continue feeding on the Word of God. We have to continue meditating in it until we, we basically become convinced of its reality as truth. And if you don't, it won't work for you. And if you, you know, here's, and these, these arguments are always coming. The devil's always bringing arguments, you know. 
Well, I believe he's my Jehovah Rapha. And they'll go, that was for the Jews. Really? Glory be to God forevermore. Because he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but one inwardly, whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. I am a Jew. We're also referred to in the New Testament as the Israel of God. We are the Israel of God. What spiritual Israel? So therefore, as people like to say, in this mystical union with Christ, we have become heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, the seed of Abraham, and heirs according to the promise. Therefore, what God says about blessing, and remember, Hebrews declares that we are under a new and better covenant. Now, I'll tell you what. Now, I've got a, I've got a 2016 Jeep Cherokee. It's got power windows. It's got air conditioning. It's got a V6. It's got um, automatic transmission. Amen? Now, I'm going to get me a 2023 new and better Jeep Cherokee with manual windows, no air conditioning, or 55.4 air conditioning. Y'all know what that is? That's 55 miles an hour with four windows open. Okay? Some of you older folks know that one. We used to have little side vents on your car. You'd turn them in. That was because they didn't have air conditioning. They'd blow the air in on you. It'll cool you off. Just funnel that air right on top of you. So we had 55.4. And with those things, we're 55.4 and a half. Okay. Um, I, it's going to have crank windows. It's going to have a manual transmission. Now, on a muscle car, okay, I get it. You know, you want to hear the, you want to hear the throttle of the, you know, um, Fiberglass mufflers, you know, as you change gears, you know, wind it up and then pop the next gear and it's going, I mean, just loving it. Amen. <clears throat> now, my, my trans automatic transmission car was a Fiat 124 Sports Spider, 1975. You can still do it with that little um, 1800cc engine. It just didn't go so fast, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'd, I'd pop it down in a second, go into a curve and wind it just as hard as it wind while I was in the curve. And then right as I was about to pop out of it, I'd pop it to the next gear, and it would shoot right out of that. <laughs> it, would just, it would shoot out of there. Whew, I love it. I'm still only doing 45. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but when I got my, and then I went and got me a, two, a, a 1980 uh, 2000 cc engine Fiat Spider. But it put an automatic in it. My wife got tired of me jerking her around with the change of gears. <laughs> she was tired of it. I hated it. I hated that. About two months after I had it, I'm like, where is my gear shift? You know, I can't, I can't downshift. I can't. Anyway, so I got this. I got 2016 Jeep. I'm going to get a 2023. I'm going to have manual transmission. I'm going to have no air. I'm going to have manual windows. And I'm going to get the little inline four. Turn it into a Flintstone mobile. But I want a sunroof. So I'm going to get a sunroof on it. Now, I may have a new vehicle. I don't have a better one. Are you here? A lot of stuff is stripped off that are, that by today's standards, necessary. And if you've never had crank windows, you, know, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. No, you don't have to mess with the regulator. Your, your cable don't break or anything usually. But, you know, and it starts pouring down rain right at your drive through window, and you can't get it up fast enough. I mean, you can't get it down fast enough. Hello. And you got no air conditioning. So when you roll the windows, my, my Fiat 124 didn't have, have, have uh, air conditioning. It's convertible. Pop the top and ride, you know. Even when it was, it was like 40s, I turned the heat on and run around and top down. Oh, yeah. Roll the windows up on the sides and turn the heat on and put the top down. <laughs> you understand, don't you, Dick? Oh, yeah. If you're ever on the rack top, you got, you got to understand that's the way you did it. You know, and um, I'm going, I got a new Jeep. Yeah, but your other one was better. I mean, you can't tow a cat with that I-4. When I bought, actually, when I bought the, the, the V6 uh, in 2016, they did everything they could on the lot to get me to buy an I-4. I said, I don't want 
a four-cylinder. Test drive it. I took it out for a test drive with the salesperson in the car. <coughs> went down Wendover, got on, and, and went down the ramp to get on 40. And I got it to the floor. I said, that's exactly why I don't want a four-cylinder engine. It's get up and go, got up and went. It's got no power. Okay? But so I go get this brand new 2023, has none of the features. Hello. Got the little, you know, four-inch screen that just tells you, you know, plays your radio numbers up there. I got the 8.4 inch with all the digital, all the stuff on it, on the one I have. Okay, back in camera, all that. Same thing with the covenant. If I'm going to get a new car, I'm going to get a better car. I'm going to have everything on what I got now, plus all the extra features that are provided for now that I couldn't get when I got it. I'm going to have the full panoramic uh, roof. I'm going to have Apple Play. Hello. Navigation. Heated seats. Heated steering wheel. Leather. Lane avoidance. Okay. Hit trailer hitch. I'm going, it's going to be everything I don't have, everything I did have, and the stuff I didn't. The old and the new covenants are that way. It's not a new and a better covenant if he starts becoming Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tzidkenu, Jehovah Imkadesh. Hello? Jeho did I say Jehovah Shalom already? Okay. I left out a couple in there. If I, if I get a new covenant, he's none of those things anymore. Because that was for the Jews. But I get to go to heaven. His intention, God did not come and say, I'm Jehovah Rapha, I'm Jehovah Shalom, I'm Jehovah Jireh, I'm Jehovah Tzidkenu, I'm Jehovah Shama, I'm Jehovah M. Kadesh. Only the moment we got to get born again to stop being all those things. Because he didn't stop. I am the Lord, I change not. If he was Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, under the old, he is your Jehovah Rapha under the new. Why? Because yeah, I am. That's who I am. I am those things. Amen? But Satan, if he can't get you to believe that the, the Bible's not true, then he'll try to get you to believe that parts of the Bible are no longer relevant. That are part of the blessing. Now, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So what did he do? He took the bad stuff out, put extra new stuff in, and said, you got to do it in a better covenant. But Satan would have you believe that for some reason, when Jesus came and bore our sin, when Jesus came and bore our sickness, that he's no longer our Jehovah Rapha, so no question, not the validity that he is, he, he has been those things, they just don't apply anymore. Well, what happens when that happens? What will be the result of, of believing that narrative? You won't believe it. And if you don't believe it, you won't act on it. And if you're in a church that, that believes that way, those things aren't for today. And you come in saying, well, I read in the Bible. They'll say, oh, who you been listening to? Don't you listen to that Copeland bunch. Don't you listen to that Hagen bunch. Don't you listen to them faith people. Well, you better stop preaching in your church because we're saved by faith. Amen. For we're saved by grace, I mean by faith, I mean by grace through faith. That not of yourself, that's the gift of God. Okay. We don't believe in that faith stuff, but then what are you preaching? <laughs> If you're saved by faith and you don't believe in faith, now how are they getting saved? Amen. And we have zipped right on past the top of the hour. Is there anything else I need to get out before we quit? You all enjoyed this? Okay. Because this is so important. This is so vital to your being able to receive. So what do you do? You find out what the Word says. Dad Hagen used to say this. He said, every time I have a need, I find scripture that supports me getting that need met. 
Now, not just one isolated scripture somewhere. He says that two or three, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You go find enough in the Bible, hello, to be able to step out in faith and speak. Amen. And turn off the naysayers. Turn off the unbelieving believers. Don't listen to them. They will preach you right into unbelief. Amen. Like, remember, I told this a few weeks ago about the little girl who came to church? All she had to do was to cover her Bible. And the pastor said, Honey, what happened to your Bible? She said, I got it right here. He said, Yeah, but there's nothing in it. She said, Oh, brother, pastor, don't worry about that. Every time you said something wasn't for us today, I tore those pages out. I plan on losing the cover today. He didn't take the whole thing away from her. Because he would say, this don't belong to us today. This don't belong to us today. This. So she just tore, was tearing them out. That don't belong to me. I shouldn't be reading it. Amen. Well, you, if you've been in a church like that, go get you a Bible. Go buy one from down at Salvation Army for $2. Take, take everything out and take, carry the cover to the pastor. Say, I'm leaving. Because you said none of this belongs to me today. I don't. Then why should I even have it? I'm being foolish now. I mean, I'm, I'm jesting. I don't want you to go do that. You might want to pray for the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. They see the hope, know the hope of his calling. Amen? We don't make a fool out of them. Which is why I didn't use the name of the person who did that with their husband because we're not here to, dis, you know, to um, disgrace their memory because they did a lot of good things for the kingdom. But they got her into some areas that were just unprofitable. Amen? And that could cost you your life. You can go home early doing that kind of stuff. Many ministers have gone home early because they started doing stuff that, that were wrong. And the Lord just couldn't let it happen. But he didn't want to, to disparage the work they had done. So they just went home early. Okay? All right. Let's receive tonight's offering. Let you go home and meditate, muse, speak the things you've heard out of the Word of God. Speak what the Word says. You need an offering envelope for in-house. They're on the seat backs in front of you. If you're giving electronically, uh, that's on PayPal and or um, Cash App. You can, you can give that way, the electronic means. You should know them by now, okay? Uh, give at expeditiontriad.org for PayPal. Uh, expedition, dollar sign, Expedition Triad. For cash app. That's just no, no dot, dot anything. Just dollar sign, expedition triad. Okay? Hallelujah. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe, as they give, as they sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you the windows of heaven are opened unto them, and you pour out blessings on them they do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, receive any in house. Hallelujah. And while he's collecting the in house offerings, praise God. We thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we would love to have you join us here at Expedition Church of the Triad. We are located at 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, which is at the um, T section, not an intersection, but T, Walter Wright T's into Hunt Road, which is also the next same road as Pleasant Garden Road. Hallelujah. Um, as you come out to the country, it changes names. Praise God. But we'd love to see you. Join us. Be uh, 1030 on Sunday mornings, 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. Mark your calendars for October 6th, 7 and 8. Shekinah Glory from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We'll be here in music and ministry, uh, preaching the word, ministry in uh, Holy Ghost, spiritual song and music, ministering to people by the, by the Holy Ghost. And you will want to be here for that meeting. Mark it. October 6th, 7 and 8. Saturday, Friday and Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Sunday morning, 1030. And praise the Lord. Hope we'll see you before then, but in that meeting is at least. Until we meet again, remember these words in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church.